When Women Speak and New Jersey Poetry Events presents When People Speak Poetry and Conversation with Pop Up Poetry Guests. Our Pop Up Poetry lineup will be. Wow, James, what a powerful intro. Welcome, welcome everybody out there in Facebook land. Welcome to When People Speak. I am Amira and this is my co-host, Mr. James Ellerby. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Um, this is our fifth episode of When People Speak and we have a phenomenal, phenomenal show for you. Um, some dynamic, poets um who are you know more than poets we have a complete lineup of stars this this episode is about stars so um sit back relax enjoy yourself and we're gonna get this going and we like to always start it off um to set the show um and give you you know a kind of uh, uh to set the show off right so um, first up to perform is the author of Breathing Through Concrete, also the photographer and visual artist, the phenomenal, I like to call her the modern day griot, the one, the only, Amira Shabazz. And here's her little promo about the phenomenal breathing through concrete. Fantastic. Yes, that's my promo for the book, Breathing Through Concrete. It is an anthology of poems of the lives of students that I've met throughout the years being a Newark public school teacher. Um, I think that the promo in itself is amazing. It is an intro absolutely to some of the poems that you'll find in that book. All right, so if you want a copy of Breathing Through Concrete, we will put that information up later in the show. I'm on Amazon. Um, I prefer the purchases be for me. Um, however, if you cannot find the link, you can always go to Amazon. So I'm gonna start, I will show off with um, poetry because James and I are not only authors, both of us, um, we are also poets. Um, what we, our message basically is, as you listen to the various voices on this show, um, you will realize that no two poets should ever sound the same and they will not. The first poem that I'm going to do, um, this poem comes from the heart. It was written after um, the documentary for Malcolm X came out and I was filled with all kinds of emotion and um, I just had to let this one go. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna first thank Raymond Peterson um, because I'm borrowing a couple of his stanzas in my poem and I'm gonna say this poem, I'm gonna do it right now. Here we go. 
title of the poem is Wearing the X. This documentary got y'all all all talking about Malcolm. Malcolm trying to own him and his spirit. Yet in your other life, most of y'all would have been, would have been the same people talking about they crazy. Take that rag off your head. He's way too violent. Let's go with King instead. It's better to sit in and turn cheeks and to carry guns than to carry guns and to carry guns. Let's win them over with peace. Least we forget. Least we forget we stood docile in peace and they came and raped us through with violence. But, but, but Malcolm, Malcolm was from another cloth. When our other spirits fought back to raise this king to his rightful place as the truth bringer, a revolutionary beacon of strength and charismatic discipline to the throne of civil rights activists and away from thug and away from thug of violence in a crazy false religion, Islam. With sisters dawn rags on heads and brothers spew words of wisdom from beyond Muhammad speaks where the lowest could have been the highest hope and God himself was above the black man, the chosen. Yes, you people are like open wounds, ready to fester and allow the poison dropped in by others to eat away at the flesh, at the flesh of mindless existence. We raised his status, despite the effort to keep him at the bottom of the heap of misfits and not valid, and not valid, and not valid to lead a mighty nation. Up you mighty nation, we did this in spite of them. We wear the X, and even Serafina declared, I am Malcolm X. Stand for freedom, for justice. Fight like revolutionists. Think like Malcolm and trust only the blood that made you and stands next to you toe to toe. Now watch. Watch as they try to unravel his truths, telling you about murders they knew and how you protected them when they shot him down in front of the lives and loves of his family. Watch, watch as you hate a whole congregation, a whole religion, a whole city, a whole dirty city of liars and conspiracies, a whole nation of black, a whole nation of black seas of blackness, black Muslims. Watch, watch as you walk away from truths filled with self-hate once again, breaking ties with your ancestors. Even Alex Haley told you He told you those ancestral chains and ties be right back to Islam, so hate it. Break your connection again. Irony, you love to hate the ex. Malcolm wore it as his badge. It covered his heart and fried his stride. You, you hate what he loved. Who taught you that? They knew all along who was responsible. They knew who's killing you now. So when they shot Malcolm Little down on the stage of the Audubon Ballroom, when his life ran out through the bullet holes like people running out, running out, then murder began. His blood soaked the floor and one drop found a crack through the stark pounding thunders ripped, ripped, ripped under the stage and began its journey. Burled through concrete and into the cellar and dropped down into darkness, exploding like quicksilver, pellets of lights, panicking rats, paralyzing cockroaches, tunnel through, tunnel through rubble and wrecks of foundations. The rocks of the buttress of the bowels of the city flowed into pipes and power lines and the mains and the cables of the city, our city, their city, our world, their world at thousand fiery seeds. And at that moment, those who drank the water where he entered, those who cooked food where he passed, those who burned light while he listened, those who were talking as he went knew. They knew he was water running out of faucets, gats running out of jets, power running out of sockets, meaning, meaning running along taut wires to the hungers of the living. And it was said, whole slums of clotted Harlem plumbing groaned while minds opened and swallowed it whole and sundered free that day and disconnected gas and light and went on and on and on. They rushed his riddled body to the, to the hospital on a stretcher, but the police were too late. It had already happened. And welcome to When People Speak.
Mara, phenomenal piece about our brother, dear brother Malcolm. Um, definitely lost um, a leader. And man, just imagine if he was still around and where we would be, you know, as a people, you know. Um, There's all but- kinds of theories. And I guess the, the, the heart of that poem is just um, having people realize that some of the things that come out of mouths today have no idea of what the struggle really was. And the transformation of, of this brother from, from one existence into, into another. And he had several transitions. Um, and of course, this conversation could be a whole program in itself. So I don't want to take that kind of time to even suggest that uh, we um, be, be linger this conversation any longer because there's so much to him. Just be mindful that the struggle that we are now in, that foundation was laid and those b- battles were fought long before we breathed. So we don't have the right, we don't have the right to stop now. So as you're marching and as you're you're protesting and as you're uh, fighting for injustice in the United States of America, just remember you have the strength. It was passed down to you in the breaths of those that came before. Thank you. Words from the Griot herself. All right. So James, what, what you got for us, James? I, I, you want to mellow this out a little bit because that's kind of an emotional piece, and I'm, I'm still got to, I got to get myself together after doing that one. What you got for us? Uh, no problem, no problem. Um, I got something new, um, something uh, fresh off the press. Um, I know you heard it already, but uh, you know the audience hasn't heard it yet. So um, this is um, just something I, that's been, you know, brewing up inside of me. Something that. I kind of wanted to um, express and I finally put, you know, the pen to the pad and um, here we go. It's called Blurred Blues, Blurred Blues. One of my fondest memories in middle school was to make something explode or bubble over onto my desk. Who would think that making a complete mess in my science class was beautiful. Who would think that dropping small toys to demonstrate Newton's law of motion was my version of dropping science? A little black boy was able to experience life's conundrum without questioning his curiosity. But now as a black man, I'm not allowed to have a curiosity? Like I couldn't possibly balance being black and having a love for science in the same in the same hand like a black man is not allowed to have an imagination. Like a black man can't ponder creation, planet stars, black holes and quasars. How dare I pick up a comic book and look behind the pages and illustrations of imagination. Like comic books are for white people. Like the X-Men were not an analogy for the civil rights era. Like today's society view us as mutants, an era, a problem, a mistake. Like COINTELPRO wasn't synonymous with the mutant agenda. You mean to tell me that kind of thinking is only reserved for white people? I guess a black man can't squander his time with science, comic books, philosophy, and sci-fi. Was it not black women that gave the astronauts the mathematics to go to the moon? Was it not Ava DuVernay, the first black woman to direct a hundred million dollar film? Was it not Ryan Coogler that directed the highest grossing solo superhero film ever? Was it not one of the greatest boxers to ever live, Joe Lewis, that coined the highly philosophical phrase, everybody has a plan until they get hit. But I'm a black poet who's relegated to writing one dimensionally, but who happens to have a stigma to see life in the fourth dimension, seldom recognized or mentioned as a true writer amongst his own and others to hide my thoughts at home, but I know there are other blurbs out there. I know I'm not alone. My blackness is infinite. Like my mind, it's infinite. It goes beyond struggle and black liberation. 
It understands that you can't have liberation without creativity and imagination. Just read Octavia Butler. Just read Tanana Rivdu. Just read Milton Davis. Just read W.E.B. Du Bois and Maya Angelou. But I guess I can't be black and think the impossible and reserve my pen to only speak about black struggles, to remain in a bubble while the greatest creators and thinkers of our time reshape our time, only to be left behind. I guess I'm just another blurred who has truly lost his mind. Blurred blues. You said that you were excited about this show, and I want to tell you that the first two poems, not that it was me, but the first two poems have set the precedence here. So I'm really, really getting super excited to see what the other poets have to bring to our platform because we made a, a, a huge selection in terms of the talent. But that poem right there, brother, that was absolutely off the charts. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Blurred blue. What? How, how do you say it? Blurred blue? Say blurred that for me, please. Blues, like black nerd, blurred blues. But I, I happen to know that firsthand that you are definitely black nerd. Um, I don't want your secret out, but you're definitely in that category, probably the king of, but that's all I'm gonna say on that. So who's next on our show? Let's move this along. Who's next? Well, we got another dynamic poet by the name of King Day. And let me bring him up to Come on, show. King. Come on up here. Bring him up to our show. Um, how you doing, King Day? How you doing, doing today? I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, moving in abundance. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. thank y'all for having me on. How, how y'all doing today? We're fine, and we're happy to have you here. We can't wait to see what you have to share with us. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but before you go in, I want to give you your proper due. Um, cause you definitely, definitely, uh, the people need to hear who is this poet by the name of King Day. So King Day or other known as Deshaun Johnson has made a commitment to uplift youth, friends, family, and his community. King Day born and raised in Silk City. For all y'all don't, for all of y'all that don't know, that's Patterson, Pete Town. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Graduated from William Patterson University and now teaches middle school in Patterson. King Day's history with poetry and spoken word is not lengthy, but he has quickly engulfed himself in the New Jersey poetry scene. King Day is one fourth of a poetry group that goes by the name of Kings of the collective. Silky smooth how I churn these words and concepts out my mental like butter. I said, silky smooth how I churn these words and concepts out my mental like butter. I'm the ish written on my headstone as my legacy long outlives me. The great tool of a pen and pad empowered me to call the lane to pathos straight to the heart. And in this altar, I could feel my exoskeleton falter Life be tarantula crazy. I'm sitting in council as my ancestors convene, formulating that divine dream that hits my unconscious. And for the purpose of this poem, you could call me Rastafarian. You see, this man that stands before you is the manifestation of Jah himself. I inscribe my presence like hieroglyphics of Egyptians building pyramids. But pyramids aren't pyramids, we're diamond. Some can't conceptualize our dang creation. Deeply rooted in spiritual foundation. Shining light through tunnels in the darkest of skies. Controlling Mother Nature's beautiful elements. Bending life to my inner desires, my destined right. Fighting to expire the materialization of worldly iniquities. Ambiguity no longer frightens me. As I walk, today's triumphs are tomorrow's antiquities. Which only means I am my past, present, and future experiencing the now. Converging all of me to a single point in time allows me to appreciate past the grind. No longer scattered particles of indistinct greatness. 
but the fine dark matter shape shifting to swallow all problems. A walking black hole. My gravitational pull attract winds and life like Brady's Patriots. But all dynasties come to an end. It comes a point in time when your bill is checked. Life's a slippery slope. Downfall is inevitable. But this game I play is not defined by 60 minutes, wins or losses, or even life. This game I play is a calling. This game I play tastes good, but it's bittersweet. This game I play has layers. Devil's key. Saving lives, challenging authority. Saving minds, a radical action. Saving souls with crafty poems. Telling stories and raising consciousness like natives did with totem poles. You see, my trails of tear are tears of joy. Relocating fears, energy is neither created or destroyed. And you see, I know this poem may fall on deaf ears, but this message is for those souls who can bear. Ye are all gods. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he dwell with them. I want to live and thrive off my city on the hill. And even when this game of life gets real, the motto is always be unified, intelligent, lovable, and dominate. Bill. Um, King Day, um, yeah. you're definitely on that level of the type of talent we like to see on when people speak. Um, it's just at, at, at such a pace that you bring that message, that positive message out uh, to the youth and to the young people out there to set the course, um, give them some breadcrumbs to follow. Um, it's all positive. It's, it's getting them to their destiny of greatness. I really enjoyed that poem. I enjoyed that piece. And like I said before, um, James faded out with his technology. Um, we got to bring the whole crew back because we want to see, see how you guys work together to bring that message okay. forth. What you got Definitely. to say, James? Yeah, King. I mean, I, I'm I'm loving it. It was it was very, very, very enlightening. Thank you. See, thank I, you. I appreciate that. I, I'm no stranger to King Day. Um, <laughs> we definitely played the same stage uh, multiple times um, on slams, and mm -hmm. uh, that that piece, man, was fire, man. You brought it, and um, I'm not surprised. I know what you can do, and um, mm -hmm. but just for those out there that want to get connected with King Day. Um, you can follow him on Facebook at Deshaun Johnson and on IG at Kings underscore of underscore the underscore collective. So follow him, see the phenomenal things that him and his whole group are doing. Um, they're trying to uplift, like as his bio says, to uplift the consciousness of, and creativity of our people. And they're doing exactly that. So um Thank you for joining us, King Day. Um, we're gonna put you in the in the waiting room. The uh, VIP section, bro. We have no waiting room. Everybody down there is a VIP. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so step into the gallery, the green room, the blue room, the VIP room of when people speak and King Day. Yes, I've seen you as well in a couple of the slams out there in Cherry Street. What's the word on Cherry Street? That kind of thing, Patterson. So you go, you go. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, um, James, we're yes. gonna keep the show moving, right? Oh yes, so we, we are. We have all of these this this talent going on here. Um, the next gentleman that um will be called to the stage. I had the 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 um pleasure of being in a poetry group with this young guy, and I'm telling you, he is phenomenal. We were both a part of um, we still are a part of Nort Poets. Um, we've done several performances together, and he's always he has always been the one to stand out. Let me read his bio. Um, James, you can bring him up whenever you're ready, but the next poet um, goes by the name of Malcolm Minor. Malcolm is an actor, a singer, a poet based out of New York and New Jersey. He studied under the tutelage of actress Marie Thomas at her school, the, Ch the Children's Theater Workshop and the Peppermint Players for 10 years. He studied acting and singing and dancing as well. He performed on many, many stages, major stages, just um, for instance, the NJ Pack, Madison Square Garden. He also performed for the McDonald's Gospel Fest, Radio City Music um, Hall, and he holds a BA in theater from Ramapo College of New Jersey. He has an MFA in acting from the Actor Studio 
um, the Actor Studio Drama School at Pace University, and he featured at Unit Unit uh, Unifix Unfix. He'll he'll pronounce that for me. The Unfix Festival and the National Black Theater Festival. The Non Equity Acting Company at Williamstown Theater Festival. The Jag Fest. 4.0, Malcolm, Malcolm starred in award-winning um, Love My Rumi. Malcolm, Malcolm is also, also the head coach for an award-winning North Star Academy high school speech team. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our stage. My friend, my fellow poet, uh, <laughs> um, Malcolm Minor. welcome. How are you, Malcolm? I'm doing well, how are you all tonight? We're great, but I mean, after reading that that bio, I'm like, you sure you had time to step up on the stage, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did, yeah. definitely, definitely. I, you know, I missed, I missed you. I missed your poems. I missed the, your style. I missed um, watching you perform. You do it with such grace and elegance. Um, I'm going to stop talking now because people are about to see that, and then we'll talk again um, after your performance. Okay? Um, so you have the stage. They won't stop until our blood fills the Tallahatchie and the Mississippi. Spilling over like their glasses can't ever be half empty because they can't never get full like mama didn't feed them. Breed them, their greed, their trauma, our trauma, their sins, their needs. How hollow must their stomachs be to never have hunger pains? And even like spoiled children, they crave one more drop from her breasts. Cause that's all white babies knew how to do. To cling on a black body, suck her dry, demand for more, cry until she gives in swollen because she has nothing left to give. And so it takes her life. Cause isn't that what they do best? Too busy saying, let us take a bite out of black on black crime. I guess a black body tastes better with confusion. Disruption, distortion, sweet lies twisted around the necks of strange fruit. I bet you didn't know we were walking mills. Dancing across the plates of our masters so they don't pick at our bones. When will they realize that all black people aren't athletes? With all the mental gymnastics we go through in this ever-changing Olympic paddle held just for us, where white folks change the rules just for us, just because they wanted to keep us for themselves so they can say black folks are just for us. And we tired, real tired of not breathing, not Sleeping, jogging, not walking, dogs in our parks. Tell me why they put cuffs on our hands in Harlem while they get to stroll in Central Park. It ain't farce. Black life ain't lost on you, nor does it perplex you. Admit it. It feeds you, fuels you. Without it, you wouldn't be you. Addicted to us because you can't live with your own identity, your own society, your own vices got you hooked, crooked, looking for us, your next fix on Netflix. Meanwhile, social media always delivers that next shipment of that ghetto wise sensation. That black flesh that keeps you elated, inflated with a sense of purpose. It's no wonder on slave ships you had to lay us all out to put us all in. You knew it all along. We were your secret. And your recipe book for justice. Sprinkling us in when needed and scooping us out when you've had too much leading us to believe that the root of our problems were just us, framing it as it just is. And I wonder, how many of my ancestors' bones must lay at your riverbank before you no longer need King's dream? Before we are no longer necessary by any means, X. Until little black boys and little black girls can live without the fear of the miseducation of little white boys and little white girls, when will this party end? Before or after the cops roll up on us? 
playing beer pong with our emotions, taking shots off of our reactions, gazing at our necks for a treat. I want out, but I can't breathe for every hashtag seen and unseen, for every dream deferred between a noose and a tree, for the ignorance that suicide was their option of choice, for every mama, big mama and pop pop that knows the taste of Jim Crow better than they know justice, so please. How long must you choke me before my black turned blue skinned life would matter? So be advised, the world is watching televised your sins, he's counting. And until you learn how to write the lyrics of your own sad song, leave me alone. Thank you. Woo. But I did the bio, so I'm gonna recover and I'm gonna let James say something. <laughs> I'm gonna let James say something first. But you are blowing up our line, our our FB, I'm sorry, Facebook live feed. We have people saying yes, yes, yes. We have um people throwing clothing at you. Like <laughs> intimate apparel and all that kind of stuff in a virtual yeah. world. That's how bad that poem was. Um, it says spit poet, snaps, captivated. Wow, leave me alone. Snap, snap, snap. Somebody did so many snaps, they ran out of space. And Man. then there's another person throwing clothing at you again. So I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. This is that poem that I've been taught I told I told you about months ago that I was like, I'm still working on something, and this was that poem. Yeah, see, like we 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 have this magnetism. We we go out places and we kind of meet each other. We were on the waterfront out there in um Hoboken. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, that that dude walks like, is that Malcolm? And he's doing the same thing. He's with his friends. Is that mirror. And then we just run up and go, ah, oh, we haven't seen you so long. Yeah, he's been telling. He told me about this poem, and I'm so glad that you chose when people speak to present it. It's the first um, it first time and it doesn't need to ever go away. That was amazing. Thank that was I, I can't even give you any more props for that because the audience is already like on fire with their comments. Um, one thing I will add to this is that James had never met you. So I was like, yo, James, you gotta you gotta put him on the show. He's like, Well, Amira, and it's like, I'm gonna trust your judgment, Amira. If you say that this brother is good, he's gonna be on the show. So James, now what you got to say, James? <laughs> <laughs> so, I just need to know one thing. When's the next movie? When <laughs> play? Whatever you are doing, just, you know, let me know because I need to be there. Because that, my brother, that was acting. That was yes, that spoken word, people. That spoken word. Thank that you. Putting, that's making, uh, bringing life to words. I, I'm just... <laughs> Come on, come on, James. Let's give it to him. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Malcolm, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And um, you probably get another call to come back. Um, that's a callback. You know what that is. <laughs> that's a callback. Um, thank thank, thank you, Malcolm. No, we appreciate you. Thank you. And the audience loves you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And before he goes, just all those out there, you know you need to follow him. Go on Facebook. Look him up. Malcolm Miner. Um, Rising, rising star. I, I predict he gonna get an Oscar. That's what I predict. <laughs> so Malcolm, do you before you go? Do you have any plays coming out? Do, like that we can come and, and see you? Unfortunately, no. Everything is shut down right now. Oh so yeah, that's right. What am I saying? So I, listen, you hit me up. Virtual. You hit me up when whenever, even if it's virtual, I'll I'll support that. So you know, inbox me, DM me, you know, text me, whatever, and let me know. Got it. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.